hi guys how you doing you guys in today's video i'm going to be telling you some of the culture shocks that i experienced since i got to the uk and i can only say some because it's like every two market days i'm experiencing a new culture shock it's like every you know okay <laughs> but seriously i will feel like okay I, I got this i got the hang of this and there's something else will come up and i'm like what is all this? There are some of the culture shocks that are not really new to me because I have traveled abroad before and I have been to Europe before. Not just traveled abroad, I have been to Europe before because some of these things are kind of peculiar to Europe, I think. Just some things like walking everywhere, like you walk almost, see eh? <laughs> You walk almost everywhere in this place, even though I haven't really experienced it much since I got to the UK, simply because I don't really go out like that and anytime I go out, I drive or my husband drives, so I've not really experienced the walking everywhere too much, but when I was in Netherlands, I spent like 10 days in Netherlands or maybe 11 days and I walked almost as long as the children of Israel walked. <laughs> walked in the wilderness like no jokes i walked so much i was like what what is this like and and one thing that happens even here as well they'll tell you oh it's just a walking distance it's not far my dear sister now travel now travel they'll tell you oh it's not it's not far it's just around the corner that corner <laughs> is at the other end of the earth anyway yeah so they walk a lot here and they have very good transportation system it's just that it's not to your domot, okay? You have to walk to the bus stop, you have to walk to train stations and stuff like that. Another one that is not new to me is getting, paying for bags when you buy stuff. That one is not new to me because I've experienced it before um, where you have to pay for your bags basically. Yeah, it's not, it's not new. The cold weather is not new to me as well. However, I would say that the way it rains in the UK sometimes is shocking to me. Like, it reminds me a lot of Port Harcourt. Because in Port Harcourt, morning, hot sun, afternoon, heavy rain, night, hamatan. <laughs> like, that was how Port Harcourt used to be, you know, but mostly rain used to fall a lot in Port Harcourt. So it's not new to me that rain falls here a lot. But the thing is that the way rain falls here is very silent. In Port Harcourt, you know that, oh, rain is falling everywhere. It's just like you'll be hearing the rain. Here, you can just come out and see the road dry. And then in the next minute, you didn't hear any sound, nothing, nothing. And you come out and you see the road is very wet and you're like, so it's, it rains a lot here, even though it's not as noisy as it used to rain in Nigeria. I think here it's more like showers most times. I won't say I've experienced, I think I've experienced heavy rain maybe once or twice and it was at night. I don't even remember hearing thunder or anything like that. It was just like heavy rain, but not, not like thunderstorm kind of heavy rain, okay? Another one is everywhere getting dark quickly. Like by 4 p.m. everywhere is already getting dark. Even though it is getting better now, it's not as bad as it was like during the winter. I think it's getting better now. Um, so, but I'm not new to that as well because even in Canada, it was like that. But the one that is shocking me now, okay, about this place is that 4.30 a.m. is already getting bright. In fact, 5 a.m. is already bright. 6 a.m. is almost like it's, it's afternoon like this, like 6 a.m. And initially, because we have blackout curtains in my bedroom, I would see lights peeking through, you know, the sides of the curtain and some holes in the curtain. I used to think it was my neighbor's. <laughs> That's so funny. I used to think it was my neighbor's light. I used to feel like, okay, maybe they put on their lights in the morning because in the night, I don't used to see it. But when it comes to the morning, I'll be seeing those lights. So I used to think that it was my neighbor's light. Only for one day, I think I, I don't even know what happened, but I just opened the window and everywhere was like daytime and this was just 5.30. Everywhere was like very, very bright. Okay, so that's another one that shocks me here. The getting dark early in the evening, that one was not shocking to me. But yeah, now to some of the real culture shocks that I have experienced. Number one, driving on the left, you guys. Now, funny enough, I'm actually used to it now. Like I drive on the left now and it feels normal. It feels like that's how I've been driving all my life. But when I first came here, hey, hey, when I'm turning, when I'm turning like at a, at a, at a bend, I'll feel like I'm on the wrong side of the road and I'm about to, you know, have an accident. Like it's always felt like I was on the wrong side of the road, you know, so, but now I'm used to it. And I don't know why it was that shocking to me, but I feel like when I traveled to Netherlands, I can't remember entering cab. I don't know if I, if we ever entered a cab. I know that we took the train and then we took buses everywhere. We didn't really enter a cab, so I didn't experience it then. But I'm trying to remember if in Zanzibar it was um, right hand drive or left hand, right hand drive. Or was it South Africa? I think it was South Africa. I think it was South Africa that was right hand drive. 
yeah I, I i know that i've been to another country where it was right hand drive and i don't know why it just didn't clock but i think maybe because i wasn't driving in that country that was why i didn't really feel it until i now had to be on the road by myself now the next one this one is not really that new to me it is the excessive niceness okay niceness in quotes they're very smiley they're very hi oh, <laughs> you know they're very nice in quotes uh, and I say in quotes because I have seen them switch up. Like I have seen them, people that are very, very nice. So like I've seen when any small inconvenience, they switch up their dominion that everything just switches up and you're like, ah, what's happening? So I, that's why I call it niceness in quotes, but you know, they're very nice. Everybody's always so, oh, how are you? What is, oh, uh -huh. hello, good morning. Oh, you know, everybody's always very nice and smiley. And, but one thing about the way they smile sometimes is that you can tell that you know it anywhere. Like now the lips, they smile, but the eye, know they smile. Like the eyes are not, <laughs> the eyes are, are betraying their lips, okay? <laughs> your eyes are telling the real story while your lips are saying something else. But for the most part, I feel like here in the UK, they are actually more genuine maybe i don't know i've not been in the workforce before because i've heard so many stories about it you know being in the workforce nhs and you know care work and all of those things i've heard so much about how you know people just do stuff there okay i don't go into it right so i can't really tell about that but i feel like people i have interacted with which is mostly my kids school other parents and um just people around i feel like their niceness is quite genuine okay because i have also encountered people who did not pretend like they were not trying to be they were not pretending to be nice to you so i don't feel like everybody who is being nice is pretending i feel like some people are genuinely nice yeah because i've met a lot of people that did not just pretend they were, they were just indifferent like yeah whatever like pull up <laughs> pull up <laughs> you know so but another one that i have heard people complain about and i have definitely experienced like once or twice is the fact that you can see somebody today and you greet the person very warmly and you guys are just smiling and you greet each other very well and then the next minute they are like who are you <laughs> like, who are you i don't i don't know you funny enough funny enough I don't, want to, I don't want to start opening a new can of worms right but funny enough the people who have done that to me more are the black people here okay funny enough like i'm not trying to say anything about anybody but the people who have done that to me here where you sit today and you guys just say hi and you greet and you guys are just smiley the next minute you guys see and it's almost like they don't even want to say hi to you like they're just facing their front you are facing your front right people that have done it to me are the black people right but i say black people because i don't know where they are from I, I don't know if they're nigerians or not so i can't really say if they're nigerians but the black people ha have been the ones that have done that thing to me the most but anyway that being said the people who have been warmest to me as well have been nigerians that one i'm sure they are nigerians people who have been warmest to me have been nigerians like you guys i have one very beautiful story about a neighbor to tell you guys but i'm reserving that gist until you know until one level <laughs> until we get to one level before i'll give you guys that gist right but yeah like the people who have been the warmest to me have also been nigerians which at the end of the day it is not saying anything it is just an individual uh, uh personality thing right it's not that oh blacks in the uk are like this or whites in the uk are like this it's just an individual personality thing because i can give you examples from both sides um the the whites who have been cold to me they're not many funny enough maybe just like one person and i won't even call it coldness i'll just say we didn't greet as warmly as we greeted the previous two times right it was just oh hi hi that was it right but i have met white people especially parents in my children's school who each time they see me they're like oh hi how you doing <laughs> and i'm like oh hi 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 like yeah i've met people like that as well that anytime they see me like it's just warm greeting and smiles and you know they ask you one or two questions you ask them one or two questions and that's it right yeah so again i'm just trying to say that it is not a white people thing or a black people thing it's just a person by person thing but i would still say that nigerians are nicer even though i've heard so many people say oh beware of nigerians beware of nigerians for me i feel like i'm, I'm debating too much now but I, for me i feel like it just depends on who you come in contact with right and what you how what you are doing with the person like what are you doing with them that you, yeah, you need to be careful with them what are you doing with them 
<laughs> is it not just normal friendship? Just, oh, hi, hello. Oh, maybe uh, invite them for something or they invite you for something. Or, you know, what are you people telling them? What are you, what are you, what are, what are you exposing your, as in, I don't know how to explain it. What are you guys doing with them that needs you to be very careful? Be very, like, no, if you day your lane, they will day their own lane. Most times, why things go sour is because some of you are doing too much. That's what I feel. It's still my own opinion, I beg you. But I feel like some of you are doing too much. You are intermingling too much, which is causing friction at the end of the day. Yeah, like there can be a healthy balance where like you don't have any information about me that can put me in trouble or whatever but we are still good like we're not enemies or we're not strangers we are friends but you don't have anything on me that can put me in trouble so how will you put me in trouble except they intentionally set you up ahead i'll say okay i mean that one is very diabolical but for me oh my sister has lived abroad for how long now my brother too I've not heard I've not heard them tell me anything about oh beware of Nigerians. Their best friends there are Nigerians and you know they have the Nigerians they have been best friends with have been of tremendous support to them, very positive influences on them as well. So yeah, anyway, this is not the topic for today. Now culture shock we they discuss. So another one that has to do with driving is that when a car allows you pass or when you allow a car to pass they tell you thank you <laughs> like not that they say thank you they just do their hand like this and for me it's a culture shock because i am like that normally like in nigeria if a car allows me pass i should be like you know just wave at them or just like be like oh thank you or i can't I, I even say thank you like i'll say oh thank you in fact even now i still say that i say thank you you know or i remember then in nigeria let's say i drive nonsense driving somehow i'll be like sorry 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 <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll be like, sorry, 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 well, don't, don't, don't even vex, because no Nigerians now, we're always ready to give you fire for fire, so if I just see that, oh, I just drove nonsense now, or, or I cut someone off or something, like, you know, even if it's not intentional, I'll just be like, oh, sorry, 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 no vex, no vex, no vex, you know, so when I came here and I saw people doing the same thing, well, the same thing in terms of just saying thank you, I was like, eh, hey, this is, these are my people, these are my people, you know, so it's, it's normal here for if you, if you if somebody allows you pass or you allow someone pass even when they are the ones allowing you pass they tell you they just wave at you they don't say thank you but they wave at you like they will allow you pass and they just be like and you too be like you know i like when people are just you know polite and courteous okay i, I like it it's it, it's it's right up my alley okay <laughs> you don't always have to have pepper body for everything you don't have to be strong in face for everything like just you know be nice now when it comes to the house i was shocked at how small the rooms are but i feel like my shock was more more because of how i envisioned the rooms when i was looking for houses okay you know how when you see a room in a picture it feels and looks bigger than it is in real life so i feel like that's where most of my shock came from because i have been to europe before and i have seen how small their rooms are in fact i feel like uk is even a little bit better i remember in netherlands the house that we stayed in the staircase was so narrow i was just like how did they even build this thing like the staircase was so narrow i even used to wonder then how they used to carry things up and down the stairs right so i shouldn't have been that shocked when i came here but i think that because i was looking for houses before then when i came here i was shocked but if i if i wasn't looking for houses i wouldn't have been that shocked another thing with the houses again correct me if it is just a my house thing if it's not a uk thing please correct me but none of the doors have locks except the front door and the back door none of the doors have locks i'm like hello <laughs> especially my bedroom hello hello <laughs> wait till you are exposed eh whose leg do you want to bring outside like this like that okay so yeah i don't like the fact that my bedroom does not have a lock none of the rooms here or none of the doors here have a lock except the front door and the back door and also the way the door locks here that's another thing that shocks me is you know in nigeria if you want to lock a door you just close this door and then you lock no here well maybe it's just a house thing again again correct me if i'm wrong but here when you want to lock the door you close the door you raise the handle up before you can turn the key if you just turn the key without raising the handle up the door will not be locked okay so for you to actually lock the door you have to raise the handle up another one that shocks me a lot is how much paper these guys use like how much i mean paper paper like paper okay how much paper these guys use every time i'm receiving a mail i'm receiving a mail from these things that you can just send me as email or something i don't know like every time i'm receiving 
this uh, uh, letter or this letter or that, like letter or letter with, with with envelope and all that, all the time I receive. I'm like, what is happening here? Even the person that lives here before, I keep receiving their mails. I think they signed up for all these medical journals or something. I think the person was a doctor or something. So all these medical journals, this journal, that journal, this uh, magazine, that magazine. I'm always receiving magazines, plenty pages of magazines. I'm always receiving flyers. This flyer, this one is happening. That one is happening. This food place, this restaurant, this uh, <laughs> uh, what they call the name, this supermarket, this market, this shop. Like I receive paper here too much. Or again, though. Or again, no wonder they're so particular about recycling. Now, recycling is another thing that did not really shock me because it's not new to me, but it's something that is new compared to Nigeria. You know, you have a different bin for recycling and they collect the recycling bin on a different day. Then you have the bin for the general waste and they collect the bin on a different day. So, so to an extent, that was a bit of shock. Yeah, actually, the fact that they collect bins on different days, I knew about having separate bins for separate, you know, stuff, um, trash. But the fact that here they collect it on different days is what is the shocking part, right? But the paper they consume a lot of paper here oh my god amazon amazon i can order pencil from amazon and it will come in a in a pack and inside a bubble wrap and inside another pack then inside the carton then depending on what you buy from amazon because they don't want your stuff to spill or spoil or scratch or whatever the carton they'll use the, the thing is coming the thing comes in a small carton like this right they'll use a very big carton and put that thing then stuff the carton with paper like i'm like again eh, like this is maybe clipper <laughs> like what will happen to the clipper uh, which scratch will happen to the clipper that that already comes in a bubble wrap inside its own packaging you can buy a clipper they'll put that small clipper this thing inside the big box and stuff the box with paper like all gain eh. so they use a lot of paper here but another one which is not really shocking to me is consumerism oh my goodness oh my goodness if you want to finish your money in this country eh they will help you i don't think it's even as bad as um canada and us right i don't think it's as bad as that i think it's that bad i beg what am i even saying i think they're all the same there is no shop this is my small city that i'm always yabbing i'm always like oh it's a small city this one that one that one this is my small city there is no shop that is not here when i say no shop i mean there is no shop that you can think of that is not here there's sephora there's boots there's a, a, a super drug there's a primark h &M, and m like all the shops you want to think of <laughs> All the, all the shops you want to think of, they have it here. I'm like, what is it? I remember the last time I went to shopping center. Is this shopping center they call it? I forgot what they call that place. City center. I went to city center. Oh my goodness. Like, if, thank God, sir. Thank God I'm not someone that, you know, likes to go out like that. Because if I was someone that likes to go out, I would not have money in this UK. I'm begging you guys for money. <laughs> Seriously. I would not have money in this UK. Like, if I was someone that was a shopaholic, what am I even saying? You don't even need to go anywhere. Because all these stores I just mentioned now, they have online stores. So you can order anything online and you get it. They have the super uh, be expedited shipping. So if you want it in two days, you'll get it. If you want it in three days, you get it. Amazon, if you want it the next day, you'll get it. Like, if you don't have if you don't have self-control eh, if you're someone that likes to shop a lot you like to buy a lot you like to have a lot you will finish all your money in fact what is one month one month is too much now you will finish all your money in one week things will just be arriving at your doorstep you know so but for me personally i'm not someone who i like shopping you know, funny enough i like shopping but it's not something that i don't know i don't have to explain it my money is in a balanced way even though i like shopping i don't like clutter right and this house is too small to just be shopping aimlessly <laughs> or to have tourist behavior okay i think one thing that even helped me coming here is that i was conscious of not having tourist behavior okay because if you're not careful you will move to a country like this you know the europe the us the australia all those countries you will move to countries like that i just say europe <laughs> uk canada all those countries you will move to those countries and you will have tourist behavior and you will start buying things as if you are not living there like you're going to go back to nigeria soon you know how when we travel to these countries we buy and buy and buy and fill our boxes and go home if you're not careful when you come here newly because of every how everywhere is and how everything is you will see yourself buying anyhow anyhow so i was very conscious of not having that tourist behavior when i came here so i didn't really shop much uh plus i bought so many things from nigeria when i was coming which i am still using right now like i'm i'm trying to simplify my life to the barest minimum there are so many things i will not be buying if i wasn't on youtube that's just the truth like some clothes that i buy now it's just because okay i'm on youtube i'm doing hair videos i need to 
change my outfits i can't just be wearing the same outfits over and over again if not there's so many things i will not buy here simply because i just feel and again it's been more accessible as well it's one of the reasons why i have not bought the way i used to buy like my children now i remember the other time we were about to go out and i realized that sophia has only one long sleeve shirt and then a jumper that's all the the long sleeve that she has just one long sleeve shirt and a jumper but i'm not faced by it because i'm in a country where if i even want like sizes sizes uh, uh, two to ten in the same design i can get it right so unlike in nigeria where it wasn't easy for us to get some of those things you, you manage to find it in the shop and you find it in only one size or you know yeah like in it's different you guys understand what i mean like in nigeria you can just walk into a next or a george or a uh, uh primark or a h&m you just go to a particular shop that carries some of these brands and they will have maybe and they will have maybe one or two designs or one or two styles or one or two sizes in those outfits right but here because i know that all those things are accessible i know the shake like if i feel like buying a top for sophia i can just wait till friday we'll go to asda and i'll buy it right like i don't even need to go anywhere i can just order it online but even if i want to go somewhere i know for sure for sure like i'll get what i want immediately right so that is why I just told myself there's really no point buying things and just keeping and keeping. We'll use what we have until we cannot use it anymore. And once we can't use it anymore, then I just go and get a new one the next day. And the money too is not even a problem because if you want affordable clothes here, they have so many affordable stores, so many here. If you want the expensive ones, if you want the mid-range ones, anyone you want, you can get it here and you can order, order online and you can get it at your doorstep whenever you want it, right? You can even return. You can order it. It comes, you test, you don't like it, you return on it nigeria was not like that right so <laughs> so yeah if you want to finish your money in this country trust me you don't need to stress yourself like the money will just be flying out of your account just like that now the last one for today is the school system tell me why my sophia is not in school just just explain to me why in you people's mind now my three-year-old genius angel will not be going to school <laughs> just tell me why so their system here is very different from what we had in nigeria here you can't just even just go to any school you want you have to apply they will have to accept in nigeria i never applied for any school though like maybe university yeah or maybe a secondary school but normal primary school nursery school you just go to the school you want they look at the child they, they talk to you and they give you their school fees and you pay and your child to start right so but here you have to apply you have to apply ahead of time like right now if you want your child to be in september set it's already late like if you want your child to enter a particular school this september it's already late like you should have applied since last year okay so like the school now that i want ever to go to next year i'm applying for her this year right so that one is quite different for me and here school is free which is good but even though school is free is not like there are, there are some things you still need to pay for yourself like you need to buy your kids uniforms and all that so even though school is free it's not that cheap either like you still need to buy some things for yourself it's not it's not the uh, 100 free let me put it that way like you still need to buy school uniforms and all that but something happened in eva school when we wanted to get uniforms for eva school now the way they get uniforms here again is different from the way we get in nigeria in nigeria the schools will supply you with uniforms sometimes you will pay for uniform you will not see right but here they have specific suppliers that you go to and they'll just tell you what to buy the colors to buy the types to buy if you want the branded school jumper you can either get from the school or you get from the supplier as well okay then you can also just go to ask that that is george and just get school uniforms like most of my kids school uniforms i got them from from asda except the branded jumpers right but what happened in eva school was when i wanted to buy the branded jumpers they told me that do i want to buy brand new or they can just provide me with some uh, fairly used from other students at that point i didn't even know that the fairly used ones were actually free i thought that okay just give me the fairly used ones i was thinking okay maybe it's just be cheaper right so she gave me like a bunch of them i now chose some and now gave her back the remaining then she now and i asked her okay how much am i supposed to pay for it and she was like no it's free like it's free i don't need to pay for those ones i'm like oh okay but at that point we had already placed our order for um the, the brand new ones and the reason why we did that was why i took the fairly used ones was because the fairly used ones were available but the brand new ones took like one week plus i did two weeks to get them so that was why i said okay let me just get the fairly used ones so that she'll be wearing before the brand new ones come only for me to now hear that the, the fairly used ones were actually free and they were good i was like why then i gotta pay for new uniforms 
<laughs> I shouldn't have paid for new uniforms because the fairly used ones were good, okay? So, yeah, they were like neatly used. There was even one that looks like maybe the child didn't really wear it like that. And I got it for free, okay? So, that was actually a shock to me. Um, Nigerian schools were never, okay? Which now I'm thinking about it, but why do? Because when we were living, we had so many new uniforms, like for Cora, Eva, that would have benefited other children even though yeah i gave them out like i gave them to um cora's friends but if if a child didn't have somebody to give them to it would have been nice to just donate those uniforms back to the schools and the schools can then give them to other students even though i don't trust nigerian fairly used <laughs> i don't trust some nigerian fairly used okay some it's not even because of anything okay nigeria can be quite dirty because of our dust and you know mud and stuff like that around so it's difficult to use something neatly in nigeria even cars it's difficult to use those things neatly because the road itself will help you destroy the car another thing that shocks me about their school system here is that they are very practical with their stuff and they read books a lot like they read books like read actual books not math english science all those things like they just read novels a lot when i say a lot i mean a lot there's always one book to read which i like funny enough i like because all those books still have all those things that you are, you are trying to teach the children okay all those science geography english all those things they are still inside the book right but yeah they are very practical here my kids have done so many things in just how many months they have done so many things eva is always crafting eva is always coming back home with mattress bed dollhouse laptop different things that she crafted herself right so they are always crafting in in school they're always doing practical stuff they're always doing this drama this play this that this uh, presentation you know which is is good okay but i remember a video where uh, I remember when I was I was asking my kids what they like about Nigerian schools and what they don't like about Nigerian schools. Funny enough, all the things they were mentioning that they don't like in Nigerian schools were the reasons why I like the Nigerian schools. Okay, <laughs> others, uh, if you, if you if you don't finish your your food, you you will not go to, you will go for a break. If you don't finish your work, your teacher will tell you to finish your work before uncle <laughs> before uncle. Why won't you finish your work and you want to go and play? Sit down there and finish your work. You know, so here is different. So when they were telling me all those, they are cons about nigerian schools in my mind i was like i i prefer it i like it <laughs> then another thing that shocks me about schools here again is that anything the kids want to participate in you have to sign up for it and sometimes you have to pay one pound for it which is like like the other day they had disco in their school we had to pay one pound for the disco um even for they call it uh, how they call it now they call it free dress day that is day you can just wear anything you want i think they they have one today they are doing awards ceremony in my i think they are giving awards today so they're supposed to wear free dress i think i'm not sure about today's zone but previous ones that they've done previous free dress days you pay one pound for them to allow your child to wear a free dress which is funny to me it's weird like okay in eva school on fridays you can buy ice cream from the school they also have one competition they are doing for them to buy freezer and then somebody will win money from it as well but yeah on fridays you you can buy ice cream from the school for your kids however i have never participated in it i've never bought ice cream from school for my kids simply because number one i always forget to carry money with me even though they say it's like 50 pence or one pound or something i don't even know but i always forget to carry money with me i also I'm always in a hurry like when i pick eva the, the time is very short between when i pick eva and when i'm supposed to pick cora so i just pick eva and we're just running towards the car i don't have time to stand in queue that i'm buying ice cream plus i don't even want it to be something that every friday she now feels entitled to ice cream nope okay so ice cream is a luxury in this house it's not something that we buy all the time so yeah but yeah let me know what you guys think let me know your own culture shocks if you move to the uk or any country you move to let me know your own culture shocks these are just the ones that i have experienced but i am sure there are more to come i'm i'm, I'm waiting for them i'm waiting i'm ready what is this bring it on okay i'm ready for you people <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you all in my next video bye guys <laughs>